The podcast you are listening to of Holmberg's Morning Sickness is brought to you by my friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Trust me on this one. You've had barbecue before, but you haven't had it this good. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Eric's Family BBQ.com. When was the last time you had really good Texas style barbecue? Eric's Family Barbecue, the way it's supposed to taste. Always delicious, never rushed, and prepared to perfection. Eric's Family Barbecue uses only 100% fresh meat, slowly smoked over mesquite wood until it's juicy and delicious. We all know their brisket is the best, but have you tried their pulled pork, pork ribs, or rib tips? Amazing, and their sides are all house made. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meat, mesquite, repeat. Make the trip, you won't be sorry. Sorry. Go to ericsfamilybbq.com for more information. Holmberg's morning sickness. You've been deceived by an agent of Satan himself. He's evil. Sitting right here. Come on. No, no, he's not. He's not evil. He's just a bit rude. Ali Sadiq did not disappoint. I've I've watched that dude a lot, and uh, he's never been here. I just didn't think Phoenix was one of his markets. I don't know that he's, but it was awesome having him. He's great and very funny, cool guy too. Uh, that'll be great. Go go to Stand Up Live and check him out. Uh, it is time now at 921. This day is just flying by uh, is to have us a, an entertainment drill. And Brady's here for that right now. Brady, for God's sakes, it's time for you to entertain us. And it's brought to you by our friends at reactdefense.com, the home of tactical black self-defense training. We were talking about boxing and stuff like that. Sport fighting is a blast. Great. Keeps you in shape and all that stuff. But street fighting is an absolute mind game that uh, becomes uh, – Something more than just fighting. Uh, I was reading about this the other day, and Jay says this up there at the at the gym all the time. The average fight, street fight, lasts 8 to 17 seconds before somebody is done. Almost all of them, like 93% on this thing I was reading just the other day, uh, go to the ground. So you can sit and say, boxing skills, I do this. I got boxing skills. A street fight goes to the ground. You got a weapon involved, they're usually even faster. So uh, the, the scary part is is that you might think you can do it, but until you're put in the situations, and pl- trust me, the guys at Tactical Black put you in the situations, you're like, oh, Jesus, this is fast. This happens quick. So they play the part of the bad guy a lot of times. Brett went with me that time, and that 21-foot rule is the scariest thing in the world yeah. when you realize a guy with bad intentions and something in his hand can get on top of you, and you can sit and box all you want. He's going to do stuff just doesn't matter, and a lot of them have skills too. So uh, you start learning the scenarios that don't necessarily put you in a spot because sport fighting – Boxing, like Ollie was saying, you get in there and you learn and you're like, you get punched and you're like, all right, I get it, I get it, I'm going to land one back. That's not how the street works. Street fighting is a different beast and it's a blast to learn. Plus, you get in great shape, so hopefully nothing stupid ever happens to you in life. But if it does, do you know what to do? Can you defend yourself? Well, you will if you start heading to reactdefense.com. It's the home of Tactical Black Phoenix, Undale, and Chandler. Check out their store, too, tacticalblackvault.com. A lot of great stuff in there, including these uh, new razors that Josh makes. Razors. For, sh- for shaving. Oh, yeah, like bathroom really? stuff. Joy makes soap. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she's got soap in there. They go, go, to the, wow. go to the tacticalblackvault.com and just see the stuff they've I've got. seen the belts and the watches and everything. I didn't. It's, right. they're, they're branching now out. Now self-defense soap. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah it's, it's soap that's so odiferous that it'll keep people away from you. No, it's great. Like, they've got all sorts of stuff. Check it out. Uh, it's reactdefense.com. Brady Entertain. Hellraiser is getting a reboot for Hulu. And they're bringing a female to take the pinhead. Oh. Hollywood is out of ideas. Yeah, they just put girls where boys were. Or they just remake stuff. Like, it, there's no new ideas. Jamie you know. Clayton from the L Word, Generation Q, is your new pinhead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like my old pinhead. I'm one of them old-fashioned guy. I like the pinhead the way it used to be. Make great again. Don't worry about it. We're bringing back man pinhead. It's going to be great. I prefer my pinhead to be a man. I don't. I don't think a woman pinhead is. Sub- What's she going to do? Just start sewing? She's just going to look like one of those little pin cushions. That's it. It's going to be like a holly hobby or a strawberry shortcake. I'm not afraid of a girl pinhead. I like my pinhead to be male, a male figure, or one of those dreaded trans transvestites. They're scary as hell. Put pins in that. Tom Cruise only just finished filming Mission Impossible Seven. And he's already practicing one of the crazy stunts he's going to do in part eight. Oh, man. It's another Fast and Furious. He's yeah. going to fly a World War II biplane called a Boeing Stearman Model 75. That's World War One. They had biplanes. Well, they're saying this one is a uh, WW2. I think they had trainers, though. They're oh, like, did yeah, they? Yeah, they would train in those. This like particular one was built in, 19, it was built in 1943. 
And in the movie, it's going to be in a chase with another old aircraft. I think okay. he's trying to kill himself. Because he's, he, he <laughs> he's, he's, he's going to do it himself. He wants to meet L. Ron Hubbard tomorrow. <laughs> he does. But the it's movie's the only out. way out of Scientology, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can't, you can't quit. He's trying, man. Get me up in a biplane. That's a stairman. That's a World War II plane? Yeah. What were we thinking? I th- Like I said, I think they were like the rookie <laughs> trainers before they started putting you in real planes. Yeah, what are you not, training for? Yeah, I, you're not making it across the ocean yeah. in that thing, right? <laughs> well, no, they never. They didn't fly the fighter. Jeremy, stop talking. <laughs> the fighter jets weren't like launched in Maryland and then landed in Stuttgart. Huh? How interesting is that? I never knew that. That World War II, yeah, 30s and plane. 40s, they built them. So yeah, this they were actually. That's right. Huh? Have Brady you ever been in a correct. biplane? Um, no. Me neither. Have you guys ever done no. that? No. No. I think that's one I wouldn't get. I've in. been in that. Toledo and I went up in that yeah. B twenty five, which was a World that would War be Tin cool. Goose. Yeah, but he said that it was like so thin. Oh, really? You, you can actually shoot a hear gun yeah. through the yeah. hall. Nothing oh. to it. Well, that's what my grandpa worked on. I told you that yeah. my grandpa was an, a mechanic in World War Two. And you know what my grandpa never did after World War Two? Flying a plane. He's like, I seen how they put those things together. I'm my, never getting on one again. And I'm like, I think the. He goes, Mm-mm. and my I, uncle they, flew it. Yeah, he didn't want anything to do with it. He never yeah. flew again. No, I don't think he flew. He, he commercial boated. or anything, huh? That Ever. was one of the things wow. that they Ever. told you. I mean, I, that's the stat always echoes when the guy said it to him. He said when they were training and designing that plane, 15,000, 15 to 20,000 lives were lost just for training. Really? Yes. That's crazy. That they killed 20,000 people what they, just Yeah, he said that. That, that seems like, excessive. No, I think you're thinking of uh, 9-11. I don't know. I mean, you that stat, and I, I, I mean, that seems excessive. Yeah. Maybe twelve hundred. Yeah. All right, we lost another six thousand. When they were rolling them off, I saw the a thing where the you know how fast they had to roll them off the lines, and we started getting that into the war. That can't be right. Yeah, that seems because like after a big about number. fourteen thousand, even back in the uncaring days of the early forties, I don't think anybody's like, I right, get another bird in the air. Eventually, one of these is going to stay up there. <laughs> uh, that one's not working. Uh, another, what's what's another the crew? tally, Todd? Uh, it's a twenty thousand, sir. I know your we flight need to survival, you know, when you're flying over there, was you're coming back, you got about 30. Maybe there were 20,000 casualties in those missions, in those planes, but couldn't be just training. Yeah, they would have. They I thought he threw that out. Because yeah. yeah. like, training is not going well when you lose. <laughs> the, the plane went 18 000. feet this he died time. Training. All right, get another one. Let's get it to 19 feet. That one was close. All right, I th- we got to stop, Bob. I mean, 20, I have to 20,000 letters to mothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more. Check it out to see if it, if that stats up there are from. It could be because they didn't care about life back then. You hear about the numbers of like D Day and stuff. Forty thousand died that day. I was like, man. But training seems like training's not going great. Like if you're a boxing trainer, seven of my guys are dead. <laughs> you're not going to train anymore. You at least yeah. change your strategy. Yeah, you know, like, I mean, you, at certain point, maybe put the left hand by the temple. <laughs> the guy in the uh, belly gun. By the way, our landing equipment's out. We're going to have to belly land it. Oh, right. Landing equipment. Oh, so yeah. That's where we went wrong. we got to stop stuffing this thing full of thousands of soldiers. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have made and that an aftermarket and part. Then, oh, that was stupid. All right. Well, do it again, only this time put wheels on it. Let's Duh. not put 30 in the crew manning the plane. There's too many people. He's a little heavy. Yeah, the Don't plane's too heavy. Yeah. That's why it's not taking off. You got you got 150 people per flight, and you're just having to take it off. Brett's looking, but I don't think it's there. I can't get any numbers on it. But they did. The B-26 was considered the widowmaker because of so many accidents on landing and takeoff. Yeah. You know, the two important parts about yeah. flying. But uh, well, not to the Japanese. <laughs> I would say <laughs> the two true. most important parts. Yeah. yeah, you tell those Japanese guys, what? When do we learn landing? <laughs> 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 No Time to Die is out in the theater. James going today. Bond. Are you? I'm going today, yeah. Yeah. I have a friend who saw it yesterday uh, in Chicago. And yeah? He's a Bond guy. And? Uh, top five. Really? Yeah. All right. I'm in. I've nice. never seen a Bond movie. It's two oh, hours Start and 43 with Daniel minutes. Craig. Don't go back to because modern day people who have seen the Bourne identity, and you probably have, yeah, that took over how Bond had gone south. So everything prior to Bourne identity be, is a parody of Bond to what it is now. Daniel yeah. Craig took it, and although I think there's only one really good Daniel Craig, he's still a good Bond. The movies haven't been very good. The one, first one was great. This one's supposed to be phenomenal. I haven't liked the other. Like Spectre, I didn't like. and then uh, I didn't mind Spectre, but Quantum of Solens was oh, terrible. Terrible. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, that was awful. Well, Casino Royale was the one that everybody liked. Yeah, that was a great one. Really yeah. That was his first one, too. And that's the one where they're yeah. like, we rethought it. We, we, we gruffed him up a little bit. The, the, if you watch the Connery Bonds now, you won't understand why it's so big. 
because it's been it's Austin Powers. Woody, <laughs> Woody Harrelson punched a guy out at the Watergate Hotel. It was a bar in the lobby, and it was he's cleared of charges. The guy was taking pictures of him, and he was drunk, and then he uh, lunged at Woody, and Woody just dropped him. There you go. That's a Woody who actually has a future and a strong, strong right hand. <laughs> He's I there. thought that's where Brady was going. The Woody first. we know uh, didn't fight back at all. And that's why he's out of work today. We're not allowed to talk about it. We well, nobody Brett, witnessed it. That's yeah. why Brett's been gone. He had to go take care of business for the company. <laughs> well, you know. Brady, if the if the, people actually did ask me, <laughs> is like, Brett taking over the Woody show? And I'm, I don't know. By the way, Woody is uh, going off the air in 20 minutes. And it begs the question, if a radio show that no one listens to goes off the air, does anyone hear it? Let's hurry up. we got to tune in. No, got to hear his big finale. Play. We'll be the th- four guys in the room listening. It will sadly say, see you Monday. Because <laughs> he's still got a job elsewhere. Yeah, he doesn't know yet. Yeah. Oh, he knows. He knows. <laughs> oh, he knows. He's still got a job. Pete Rose has a new sports gambling podcast. Nice. I'm, in. I'm in. He says, I know it sounds bad. I'm taking all his picks, man. He's a handicapper. That's yeah. what he does. It's, it's not gambling. gambling. Right. He tells you what to bet on. Or he tells you what he thinks is going to happen. So was Lefty in Casino. He was a handicapper. That's right. Wasn't a better. William Shatner's going up in the penis rocket. He, 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 oh, is that the Bezos? It's the PP rocket. Yeah. Oh, glorious. <laughs> the Blue Origin. He's going to be in the, the squares. Blue what? The Blue Orgasm. <laughs> no, stop. Stop it. <laughs> he's the one, that, Shatner, in the interview with uh, Anderson Cooper, said he's going to go on up there to inseminate space. Okay. He was making fun oh, of the I rocket. I know. That's right. You don't want to talk like that to Anderson All Cooper, right. though. <laughs> Sad news in the food world. <laughs> Maybe, or he's starting a new thing. Bobby Flay is leaving the Food Network after 30 years. The Food Network's 30 years old? <laughs> yeah. That's even bigger news. That's the biggest news in the world. But who's the biggest competition to the Food Network that he could jump to? He can start his the own. The Cooking Channel. Oh, yeah, I thought that was the same know. thing. It is. Or he'll just do a YouTube video and, and just get, make TikTok all the money videos. himself. Start doing specials for Discovery yeah. Plus because he yep. and Giada did that one. 30 years Italy. of people eating has worked. They don't give recipes. They just eat the food they cook in front of no, you. No, they do recipes. Not all of them. A lot of them. Bobby Flay will tell you what he made, it's but he doesn't tell you how. Brady will get all mad. I know you're going to defend radio. this. I know this well, is your no. rule. <laughs> and Bobby gets on Iron Chef, too, I think, travel, too. The but travel they don't ever give you a recipe. does the food shows, too. But it's food all eating shows. They don't go like, oh, here's a tablespoon of this, a yeah. couple of They don't do that. They tell you what they're cooking. They tell you kind of how they're doing it, but not much. And then they eat it. There there are those programs, and yeah. then there are the cooking ones. There's cooking there. shows, and there's yeah. food shows. But Bobby Flay was more about, you know, he was involved in the Iron Chef all right, and never, all these different things. Like Jada gives you recipes and all that kind sure. of stuff. Yeah. That great big toast-shaped yeah. head. <laughs> cans. I've seen her cans for a while. I got nice. kind of tired of those. That really? head is massive. That is a <laughs> wide She's definitely got a five head. I mean. big screen TV going on. <laughs> She's got Samsung on her chin because that thing is huge. <laughs> Adele's new album was inspired by her divorce. And she thinks when couples will hear it, a lot of women are going to be like, I'm done. They're going to get divorced because yeah, Adele talks Yeah, so if you want to speed that up, get the album. <laughs> Adele's talking <laughs> them into it. Wow. I've got these old feast women. I said, my unhappy marriages. They're going to listen to my song. Hello leave him. from the outside. And they've got to leave him. Got to leave that bloke. He's no good for you. I lived with my brother for, for 14 years. It was the same as being married. No sex. All we did was argue. It's because she lost all that weight. Well, I think the only way Adele is oh that this so she took off because yeah. she got she got hotter. Oh, yeah. Maybe, but I, I think the only way Adele's music is good is when she, when her heart's broken. Because the only songs she's got that are good are I mean she can write from the depths of sadness better than anybody. That hello thing is heartbreaking to a woman who can't get over a relationship that has clearly ended. It's like rock stars oh. that need to be on drugs to yeah. That's when they're made. She needs best to work. be. She needs she, to be. She dumped. needs to get dumped now. <laughs> Oh, my God, my career's going in the temper. Will you break up with me? <laughs> right, that's enough, Adele. I don't care for you no more. That's how I picture the whole relationship. <laughs> Some weird thing with a chimney sweep. <laughs> that's it, Adele. No more of this nonsense. It's just filthy. Are you leaving me? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I like you big and fat, and you lost all that weight, and now I want out. Leaving you a couple of quid. Goodbye to you, I say. And good luck with that career. <laughs> and she starts writing beautiful songs about dudes leaving. And he's sitting there having a pint. What happened? She was talentless while I was with her. I made all the quid. 
Dua Lipa's a little like that. Oh. I like her angry songs. Dua Lipa is good with heartbreak. Yeah. She Generational just... talent. Sorry, I just started thinking about her. So let's get ourselves to Guadalupe Squares. Jeremy's final one. Well, unless something happens, you come back. Yeah. High probability. But even still, this is the last one Jeremy gets to host. I know, I know. I see America smiling. But uh, Jeremy does one more and we're done. We need a girl and we need a boy. 585-9800. The squares are coming up next. It's 98. Arizona's most powerful rock radio station. He said fully erect. 98. You've been listening to Holmberg's Morning Sickness Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat, ericsfamilybbq.com.